Wedgwood Partner CAO David Rolf. David, um, first let me get you to weigh in on the conversation that John and I were having at the start of the show in terms of these layoffs we're seeing in tech, particularly here in the Bay Area. Morgan Stanley says it's not a canary in the coal mine. How do you see it? Maybe it's not a canary in a coal mine for the broad U.S. economy, but I think it's going to be very significant in the greater Silicon Valley um, industry. I, you know, we had look at how many years we had of zero percent financing, free capital. It was open, free running, and uh, the employment growth at these companies was just. I mean, it's really hard to fathom, and I think that we we may be looking at in the near future. We may be looking at at um, aggregate unemployment figures ex Silicon Valley. So uh, but I think some of these companies are are just getting started. And yeah. maybe uh, again, maybe Twitter might be a little bit of a microcosm in that if you can cut back a lot of folks and still, you know, keep the trains running on, on time, um, maybe that's a little bit of an inkling for other companies. But, you know, we own some tech wow. stocks who, that have already announced significant layoffs. We're probably in the early innings of that. That definitely remains to be seen, whether the trains can be kept running, David. Um, but your point is well taken. I mean, Twitter and Salesforce, two companies, you know, downtown San Francisco that are we're seeing layoffs at that are going to affect the broader economy. Let's get to your Taiwan semi pick. Um, Berkshire Hathaway also likes the company. What do you like about it? And how are you viewing that China risk? Well, our our, our thesis on Taiwan semi, I, I, we, we call it, you know, a couple of things. Uh, that we think it's one of probably arguably the most important company in the world. We think it, it's interestingly enough, it's probably one of the most significant companies, much less technology companies, that a lot of people don't own. I mean, it's an ADR. It's not in any of the in the S and P five hundred. It's in none of the benchmarks. And um, and in terms of uh, what's going on with China, again, word from the company is that they believe it's manageable. There are certain changes that that they can make. There's also other demands where they can shift some of that production, but um, we're looking at, we're, you know, we're in the early innings of this too. And um, we'll see as the year progresses, we're taking the company at its word that it, again, it is manageable and there's some demand, other demands where they can, they can shift some production. So TSMC is well off of its lows when it dipped um, below 40 uh, a few weeks ago, and, and it's back, you know, around, um, you know, 54, 55 area. How much of uh, what you're looking at where TSMC is concerned, and uh, I hope I have that right, how much of what you're looking at has to do with TM TSMC specifically versus the importance of advanced node chip manufacturing? And so how do you play the... Um, the desire now for onshoring, for friendshoring of that? How much does it matter, the share of U.S. manufacturing that TSMC gets and the amount of traction that Intel gets if that plan works out? Well, it's all part of the mix on how we're thinking about, uh, John, advanced technologies here. Certainly, you know, uh, uh, N7, N5 are the big prop, uh, profit drivers. High-performance computing is, is, is a big a performance driver either here in the United States or internationally. I think also what might be somewhat underappreciated is that, you know, they're ramping up pretty pretty darn quickly here, the next generation three nanometer, 3N, and their big competitor is Samsung. And it, it looks like Samsung is going to be, their latest and greatest is probably going to be used largely in-house with their own products. And so um, Taiwan Semi, I mean, they they're going to have open field running in this latest, um, in the next generation technology, they've already announced price increases of, of about uh, 22%. And our view is that this is an, an incredibly capital intensive business, not unlike the railroads in which Buffett owns, right. but here's the difference. I mean, you don't have a regulator outside, of course, market forces, cyclicality, but here's a business that's generating cash flow returns on investment of 45% on enormous capital expenditures. And again, you know, you know, the likes of, well, Intel and, and Apple and, and NVIDIA, AMD, Qualcomm, I mean, they, their latest and greatest isn't even possible without the size, scale, and scope of, uh, of, of Taiwan Semi. You're right, right, the stock has bounced off the lows, but it's, John, it, you know, it's only trading about 13, 14 times next year's earnings. Um, 
And the chart and we're we putting on the screen, yeah, shows it uh, above uh, 81 bucks a share. I was, I was looking at kind of the wrong uh, ticker there. But yes, directionally, the, the, the chart looks right. as I said. And so uh, what, what does all this mean for enterprise? Th there's some mixed signals about the health, I think, of the enterprise overall. Spending seems to be going well in, in a lot of different areas. But it seems to me like enterprise, to some extent, lags consumer and so uh, at, at what point do you look and want to see whether weakness in consumer spending uh, ends up translating into weakness in enterprise demand in a quarter or two? Yeah, great question. Certainly we know the PC market is just terrible right now and it, and it could bleed over. But we always ask ourselves, John, what's in the stock? And you see, again, the stock got ahead of itself, uh, no question about it. But when you see how low it's gotten, I mean, at the low, it was trading about 10 times earnings. Um, it was basically pricing in earnings growth, basically just flat over, over calendar 2023. And that still may come to pass, but we think there's a lot of bad news in that, including your, your thesis that this could bleed over into the enterprise. We think that's in the stock. Mm -hmm. Numbers have come down. We think we're probably more at an inflection point here where we may see net net numbers going higher and the market is going to start to digest early 2024, we think most of 2023 is in the price already. Hmm. David, it's always great to get your insights. Thank you, and have a good weekend. Thank you.